Sullivan's a decommissioned naval destroyer that you see behind me here is currently partially underwater. If you take a look over my shoulder, you can see it is on a serious pitch. Officials here tell us that it started a breach in the hull, started water pouring in about nine o'clock last night, causing this already damaged ship to take on even more water. Emergency repair crews have been on scene all day long working to determine what exactly caused this breach. Crews have been in the water trying to figure this out. There have also been city crews as well as fire crews here. I want to show you what we have been seeing all day. People from near and far have been coming out to this park to see what is an historic ship in a moment, in a historic moment of time as it is truly on a striking angle, you know, to see it in person. I had to come down here this afternoon and see it in person. It really is striking to see. These images show a before and after of the ship. You can see back in November, ship repairs were underwater at the time, but it was still floating upright. Now today, it has dropped several feet into the canal. I want to bring in my colleague, 7 News reporter, Michael Schwartz. Michael, you have been here since uh, early this morning. You know, one thing that I found to be uh, interesting when officials told us today that this ship has been sitting on about five feet of water. That's what it's floating on. It's just about five feet of water. And yet when you look at the angle that it is on, boy, it looks like it's just sinking deep and deep and deep into the water. Right, all morning long, you saw it continue to gradually sink, but there wasn't really panic here when I got here around 9 a.m. this morning. It seemed like people knew what they were doing. Had there have been deeper waters, maybe mm -hmm. there would have been more urgency mm -hmm. to make sure that it was never submerged, but right now it is staying where it is. Now this ship has listed or has tilted in the past, sparking fundraising efforts that proved to be successful. Now the CEO of this park says they do have the money, but timing to continue work on the ship just wasn't on their side. All hands on deck to lift the deck of the USS The Sullivans out of the Buffalo Harbor as it sank lower and lower Thursday morning. This was at 9 a.m. And this is what the ship looked like by noon. This is a sad day for the Naval Park, all right? Nobody wanted to see this happen. That's why we were taking measures to stay on top of it. CEO and president of the Naval Park, Paul Marzello, says he was notified Wednesday night of a major breach in the ship's hull, later saying it's in the aft of midship. Looking at this drone image, that's this area closer to the stern. It breaks my heart because my wife and I got married right next to her on the Little Rock. Chris Holtz, one of the Navy veterans who came to see the shocking sight himself, one he hopes can be saved for all the values it holds. You can walk on any of these ships right now and this, this smell. Any Navy veteran, Coast Guard veteran, anybody who's been on time on a ship, I'll tell you the smell is exactly the same. There's something about that gray paint. There's something about the, the grease and the oils and it brings back a lot of fond memories. And some, sometimes that's all these bets they hold on to, it's just that. The historic ship, which was a home away from home for sailors during World War II and the Korean War, now at the center of an expedited mission to save decades of history. Restoration work had to stop for the season in October because of falling temperatures. That work by Bidco Marine Group was scheduled to resume in just days. They were planning to come back Monday. I think our luck ran out just a little bit short. Now those workers on that boat you're seeing, you see the name Bitco, well that's that local marine group company that has been here all morning continuing work throughout the afternoon. Marcello says they've been pumping 13,000 gallons of water per the minute and actually if you look over to the left there's that gray bucket like object. Well that was at the stern, the back of the ship earlier that was floating uh, just in the water. They just retrieved that so they are starting to now retrieve the things that were on board. All right so what's the next option. Mm -hmm. Well, Marzello said the best option would be to dry dock this ship to preserve it, to save the USS Sullivan's. That would be a process five to seven million dollars in cost, but structural engineers said that it is so weak that ship it wouldn't make it through that process. So right now what their main focus is to fix and reinforce any damage on that boat to then look at future options and that's what this crew is investigating and as this boat is now heading out to continue to look at the entire area. But Just incredible to me Michael that they, they have the money to do this. They had everything lined up. The company you just referenced Bidco was scheduled to be here on Monday four to days. start the work. Just four days from now 
but of course timing not working out on their side with the president of this park saying that this ship is not going to sink on his watch. I want to give you a little bit of history. If you're not too familiar with the USS the Sullivans, the ship has nearly 80 years of history on board. It first launched in 1943 as part of the largest and most important class of U.S. destroyers used in World War II. It was later named for the five Sullivan brothers from Waterloo, Iowa, who died in battle in 1942. It was decommissioned in 1965 and pulled into the Buffalo waterfront in 1977. Worries that the ship was sinking began back in 2018 when cracks were found in the hull. And after several years and fundraising campaigns to save the ship, another round of repairs was scheduled to resume on Monday. It was just last week, $490,000 in federal funding was announced to help preserve the World War II naval ship. Last November, the park announced that $535,000 had been raised through the Save the Sullivans campaign. That's in addition to a $499,000 Save America's Treasures grant that was awarded in October. If you're doing the math, this all totals more than one and a half million dollars. Congressman Brian Higgins was asked about funding for the repairs today. I think the question is before they could get to it or issue the request for proposals or enter into a contract with uh, people that do this kind of work, uh, this incident had occurred. Whatever, you know, uh, whatever was the major influence, uh, the bottom line is there, there's a source of flooding. They have to find it. They have to dewater the vessel and then they have to, you know, repair it. When I first heard that this ship was taking on serious amounts of water, enough to cause it to physically start to sink, the first person I thought of was a little four-year-old boy. His name's Arrow. We spoke with him last year. He loves to tour this area, walk the waterfront, and, of course, walk these ships with his grandmother. And when he found out that this ship was in serious need of repairs last year, he literally started saving his pennies to save the Sullivans. He handed a bag of pennies and nickels towards this effort to save the Sullivans. Tonight at six, I speak with this little boy's grandma to find out how they are reacting to this. It's all coming up tonight on 7 News at 6. For now, Hannah, we're live along the Buffalo waterfront. We'll send it inside to the studio to you.